Good morning, traders. Good morning. Happy Sunday, May the 2nd. This is Matty Magoo. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Um, I apologize. I haven't been posting all my videos every Sunday. To be honest with you, I've just been extremely overwhelmed and busy over the weekends. And um, I just don't have the time. I don't have time to do all the research um, for everyone. And I just haven't had time to put the videos together. So... Um, but uh, today I do have some time and what I'd like to do is share with you the research that goes into me picking what I want for the upcoming week. Um, I think it's very important that you really understand the criteria that goes into what I look for in order to pick a, a stock like that. You don't have to rely on anyone. Um, you know, you can scan the market yourself. You can look for certain stocks that meet certain criterias and then go from there. You can create your own list. And I think that's important. Um, not everyone trades the same way. Not everyone trades with the same amount of money or capital. But I can tell you this, um, based on what I teach and based on what I'll show you, um, no matter what amount of money you have, you can be profitable by doing this. But the most important thing is um, staying focused, uh, not just jumping in, being very, very patient. Uh, patient is a virtue in this business. And um, if you do enter something and it doesn't go your way or it's wrong, um, it's important to get out. Uh, preservation of capital in this business is the most important thing. You can lose many times on a trade as long as your losses are small and you could quickly make them back. However, if you do lose big on one specific trade because you decided that you wouldn't want to get out, um, then you're just digging yourself a bigger hole, you know? So it makes it a lot more difficult to make the money back. So I usually like to cut my losses pretty quickly. Okay, so um, I'm going to just uh, randomly pick some stocks. Um, I'm going to go over them with you. I'm going to show you what I do and uh, what time frames I look at in order to make my decision whether it's good for me or not. Okay, so um, first stock I'm just gonna start off with, it's because it's just on my screen. I've been looking at it. As a matter of fact, it will be on my watch list for this upcoming week is Boeing, BA, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna show you a weekly chart on Boeing, okay? Now, um, these are weekly, uh, I'm sorry, this is a daily chart on Boeing. This is a one-year daily chart on Boeing. Every candle that you see here represents one day, okay? Now, I do like playing larger time frame breaks. Um, I do pay attention to the daily chart. Um, however, uh, my entries are only going to be on weekly and monthly time frame breaks charts that's it um i'm not saying that a daily chart doesn't work i'm just saying that weekly candles and monthly candles hold a lot more weight than daily candles so this is what i do first thing i do i go to a weekly chart so these are weekly candles okay i am a price action trader okay um i like playing the breaks and um, I like playing the back and sides, and I'll explain all that to you just in a second. So this is a weekly chart. These are all weekly candles. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my drawing tool. I use Thinkorswim, that's the platform I use. And uh, every week that goes by, what I do is I draw a high on last week's high and last week's low. So last week's high on Boeing, 244.65. I'm gonna draw a line at that area, 244.65. And I will put exactly to the penny there. And what I do is I usually keep it red. Okay, so 244.65, that's the high. The low of last week is 231.80. So I'm gonna put a line at 231.80. There you go. And now I have clearly identified last week's high and last week's low. Okay, now, why do I do this? Well, the high of a candle and the low of a candle, especially a weekly candle, if the price is in between, 
the high of that candle is definitely going to be resistance. The low of the candle is definitely going to be support. And I've identified it now to a penny. Okay. Then what I do is I go to a monthly chart. These are all monthly candles. Okay. Now, being that May is a brand new month, what I do is I go to the previous month, which was April, which closed on the 30th, and I identify the high of the month of the candle, and I identify the low of the month of the candle. So the high here is 260.48 on the monthly. I draw my line, 260.48. Okay, all right, four, eight. And I usually identify it in yellow. You can identify whatever color you like. Uh, mine is yellow. So 260.48 is April's monthly high. The low is 230.22. So I'm gonna draw a line, 230.22. And, all right, so there you have it. Oops, I forgot to make it. I forgot to make it. Uh, oh, all right, come on, come on. All right, here it goes. I'm gonna make it yellow, and there you have it. I'm done, okay? So, now, um, I keep the monthly high and the monthly low of April's on for the remaining May, okay? So that high and the low, those two yellow lines, it stays with me for the whole month. The only thing I do is every week, when every week goes by, I change my weekly highs and lows, okay? So the following week, depending on what the high is gonna be for this coming up, upcoming week and the low, I'm going to do that next week. I will identify the high and low of the following week um, on usually during the weekend. So like that, I'm ready for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Okay. Now, um, so basically, um, this is now what I do is I'll go to a smaller time frame. Okay. And um, I kind of look for areas of support and resistance. Um, on the daily, I just want to see where the stock might bounce from. Um, I noticed that right here in this candle, uh, 325 candle, 231.70 is a major area of support. Why? Well, as you can clearly see what happened on April 21st, uh, it got down to 230.22, okay? Um, and it bounced, so there, there is support here. Um, it's important uh, that you also learn support and resistance um, on certain time frames. Uh, if you take a look at a five-year weekly chart, there's a tremendous amount of support in this area. There's also a tremendous amount of resistance in this area. Every time the stock goes up to that area, what does it usually do? It falls back down. Every time the stock goes down to this area here, let's call it about 300 or 305, what does it usually do? It bounces up, okay? So... It's important. These are, this is important when you're trading because let's say, for example, you get in the trade, okay, when it breaks a sp specific resistance, and let's say you're right around the middle, okay, well, be aware that chances are when the stock starts to climb, it gets near this area, it's going to pull back, okay? So make sure you take some profit along the way. It happens all the time, okay? History always repeats itself in the stock market. So um, it's important that you identify these areas. However, I even make it a little bit more simpler for you all, okay? If you don't know support and if you don't know resistance, all you need to do is play the candle breaks, okay? So here's an example. Let's go to a uh, weekly chart, okay? So this is when I will get in on a Boeing situation, okay? Right now, I don't know if Boeing's gonna break down to the downside. I don't know if Boeing's gonna break up to the upside. All I know is that I've identified that this right here on Boeing, this candle, this last week candle, is an inside week, okay? What is an inside week? Well, an inside week is, if you take a look at the previous candle, 
the week of 419, the high was 247 and the low was 230.22. Okay? So, the 426 week was never strong enough to break the previous week's high, but it wasn't weak enough to break the previous week's low. That means that that is a week of indecision. It means the bulls and the bears are kind of fighting each other for a direction. Okay? We call it, I call it like a consolidation candle. But I don't know if it's consolidating to the upside where they're, the big boys are accumulating the stock to bring it higher. Or they're consolidating to distribute the stock to go lower. So what I mean by that, when a stock consolidates for a period of time. So as you can see, this is consolidation for a whole week. Okay, not a day, a week. We don't know if the large institutions are selling it little by little, little by little in order to bring it lower, or we don't know if they're accumulating it little by little, little by little in order to bring it higher. The only way to tell if they're accumulating it to take it up or distributing it to take it down is when we have a candle high or low break. So, for example, if Boeing um, next week breaks the high of 244.65, I clearly can see that the bulls want to take this higher. So what do I do? I get in on the break of 244.65. Now, let's say the opposite happens. Let's say we break the low of 231.80. Well, I know that the bears now are in control, okay? So I know that, and, and if I want to, I'm not much of a short uh, trader, but at the same time, I do short sometimes for income. Um, if Boeing breaks 231.80, well, I'm going to short it. Now, I have to be careful with one thing. I also have to look at the monthly chart, okay? And if you take a look at the monthly chart, let me zoom in right here, okay? You can clearly see that not only the weekly, but the monthly low is very nearby. The monthly low for April was 230.22. And what else do we have here, folks? Look at this. So this April was an inside month to March. What does that mean? Well... April wasn't strong enough to make to, to break March's high to continue going up, but it wasn't weak enough to break March's low to continue going down. So again, we have one full month, one full month of indecision, okay? Call it consolidation, whatever you like, but all I know is that in order for Boeing to get going higher, number one, it has to break first the weekly high, which I will take at 244.65. And then I'm gonna take a look at that monthly high, which is 264.48. There's a lot of meat and potatoes there, so you could really make money, okay? So again, um, if you do get in on the weekly high break, just realize you are gonna find some resistance up ahead. Now that's farther up ahead. So. That's usually uh, one heck of a run, to be honest with you. So what I do is I start looking at shorter term time frames for some shorter term um, uh, resistance. Um, right now, to be honest with you, if we break this 244.65 on a one year daily chart, this is a daily chart, the first area of resistance I'm gonna see is probably that 414 candles high, which is 258.37. So, uh, mind you, if we break this 244.65, it looks like Boeing could actually start running and could give us a great reward. Okay, so that's my style. That's what I do. Now, mind you, folks, um, I don't have a crystal ball, and I sure as heck don't know where Boeing's going to go. But I do know one thing. Let's say Boeing starts marching up. Am I going to get in when it hits 240, 241? No. I wait. I'm patient. Why? Well, if Boeing, if Boeing starts marching up and does not break this 244.65 area, okay, it could easily come down. 
Okay, 244.65 is definitely the area of resistance. Now, let's say it does break it. Let's say we do break 244.65. Well, Matty Magoo is going to put in an order at maybe 244.75, 10 cents higher. Okay, so now I have clearly identified my support. My support is 244.65, correct? Because we broke 244.65, which was once resistance. That resistance now becomes support. Now, it's up to me. If Boeing breaks it and comes back down and breaks this 244.65 area, it's up to me to get out. I can clearly and easily get out. And um, what is it going to cost me? 10 cents? I can live with that, okay? Because if it breaks it again, if it goes up again and it breaks 244.65, I'll, I'll give it another shot. It's not going to cost me much money to know if this thing's going to run or not, okay? Um, and that's what, I'm, that's what I mean about discipline. Now, you don't have to put your, your stop so tight. You can give it a little bit more room if you like. OK, if you want to what you know, if, if it does come and let's just say, for example, it starts coming down and it breaks the 244.65 area, depending on how you trade. Maybe you want to put your stop 10 cents lower, 15 cents lower, 20 cents lower, 50 cents lower. That's up to you. OK, but just remember one thing. The lower you put a stop. The more difficult it is for you to make back that money. OK, um, you know. Uh, it, it, that, that's without question. So again, um, you have to, you know, everybody trades differently. I, I go in very, very heavy when I have a weekly break, but I am very disciplined to get out of the way. Okay. Or to have my stop executed as close as I can to that 244.65 area. Okay. Well, and I, I just look at it as, okay, it's a, it's a failed breakout. And, I, and I'm okay with that. Um, the stock market owes me absolutely zero, nothing. But it's provided one heck of a career for me. So at the same time, it's important that you identify these areas. And I hope this, um, this helps. I'm going to do one more. Um, let's see, which one should I do? Uh, let's go to AMD. Let's just check out AMD. All right, I actually have my lines drawn on AMD already. Let me just see if they're correct. Uh, yes, they are. Weekly. Let me take a look at the monthly. Uh, no, they aren't. Okay, so um, the monthly. Now, as you can see, I have my lines on March's monthly high and monthly low. Why? I haven't um, drawn my lines here on AMD yet, but let's do it now. So here's April. The high in the month is 89.20. I'm going to move that line now to $89.20, all right, 0 0.20, and I'm going to move the low, 77.94 is April's monthly low, 0 0.94, 77.94, <laughs> well, wow, look at that, another monthly in, oh, no, actually, no, because we did break. So this was, a, this actually was a break. So in April, we broke above March's high to come back inside. Now we're back inside. So we're back inside um, the high and the low of the month of March. All right, so clearly identify the high and low, 77.94. Yes, and now what I do is I go to the weekly. Um, there's the weekly, so the high was uh, 89.20 on the weekly. So I'm going to put my line at 89.20. And looks like it's probably going to be, huh, oh, it is. So 89.20 was actually, let's make sure, yeah. 89.20 was the weekly high and the monthly high for uh, advanced micro devices AMD. Okay. Uh, the weekly low is 81.42. So let me edit my red line to 81.42. And here you have it. 81.42. I hope you guys are also doing the same. 
All right. So here you have it. All right. So I've identified last week's high and last week's low on AMD. The low is 81.42 and the high is 89.20, which is also the April high. So what do I do now? Well, the first thing I do is I see what happens on Monday um, when the stock opens. Is it going to open and break this $81.42 area? So right now it's at $81.62. It's actually closer to last week's low than it is to last week's high. So uh, again, I don't know what's going to happen on Monday, but let's just say, for example, we break $81.42, which is currently now support. Okay. Well, $81.42, what does it become? It becomes resistance when price action and the price is below that line. Okay. Now, this is another thing that I love, absolutely love to play. Let's just say AMD breaks 81.42. Well, now I've identified that 81.42 is my resistance. Let's say AMD stops somewhere around this area and starts marching up again. Well, just like I would play the break of last week's high, if it were to break 89.20 and take it long, well, I'm going to take it if it breaks 81.42, okay? I love playing those plays. I, I really do. I really make good money uh, playing the back and side candle. So I really pay attention to that. So again, um, I've clearly identified 81.42 right now as support. I've clearly identified 89.20 as resistance. That is the weekly high and low. And I am going to wait and see what happens. Um, I'm actually hoping that AMD might even break this 81.42 area, stop, and then go up, and then break the 81.42. I will take the trade. So I'll get in around 81, let's just call it 45, and I know that 81.42, if it doesn't work and if it doesn't go back up, I know that 81.42 is now support. If it breaks 81.42 and I'm in it at 81.45, it's up to me to get out of the way. Okay, I could always take the trade again. So what am I doing, folks? Well, number one, I'm preserving my capital because no one could tell you where the stock is going to go. Okay, no one, absolutely no one's going to tell you. No one has a crystal ball in the market telling you where the stock is going to go. So basically, I clearly identify my lines. I, I clearly identify to the penny my supports and my resistances. And that's just how I play. I keep it real simple and I'm very disciplined. So um, I hope this video helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, hunterchasetrading at gmail.com, or just comment below on the video. And um, I wish everyone luck, but go out there, go identify some stocks, take some time, do what I do. Um, you know, I'm not saying my uh, analysis is the holy grail, but I can tell you this. Um, there's only one way a stock can go up. It's if it breaks the previous resistance or it breaks the previous support if you're shorting. That's it. it. It comes down to that. Now, as you continue in this career, it is very, very important to learn a lot of other things. It's important to learn supports. It's important to learn resistances. Look at AMD. Over a one-year period, what has it done? You can clearly see that this area right here is, um, I'm going to draw the line so I can really show you guys, and I'm going to really highlight this line, okay? Edit. I'm going to take it. I'm going to make it, uh, let's, I'm going to go to a blue line. I hope you can see that, and I'm going to make it really large. Okay, I hope you can see that blue line there against the black. But as you can see, look how much support is in this area. Once, twice, three times, four times, five times, it almost hit that support before it goes up. So what does that tell you? Okay, well, it's pretty simple, okay? If you're in the trade and the stock is coming down, okay? You can clearly identify, because history usually repeats itself, that every time it gets to this certain area, it usually bounces from here. Okay? So let's just say, for example, um, you know, you're not in it, 
and you're watching it come down and you're watching it come down to this area, well, maybe you should start thinking about possibly buying some. Now, you just don't buy because you don't know if it's going to break this blue line and completely go down. That's when you go to your weekly charts. That's when you go to your monthly charts. See where your support and resistance is and then play those breaks. You can also clearly see that this red line here that I have, which is the weekly high, is definitely an area of resistance. It's been resistance all the way back from August of 2020. As you can clearly see, every time it gets to around this area, what does it usually do? It comes back, okay? So again, this is uh, something uh, that you definitely want to learn. It does take time. I've been doing this for a long, long time, so I can analyze a chart. It takes me about a second. Uh, I have millions upon millions of hours of chart time. But again, I try to keep it simple. I try to preserve my capital. And I sure hope this video helped. Anyhow, enjoy the rest of the weekend, folks. Happy Sunday. And if you could, the only thing I ask you to do, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, I know I'm not growing in subscribers by leaps and bounds. But the more subscribers I get there... Uh, chances are I'm probably going to do as many videos as I possibly can to educate everyone uh, on the way I trade. Anyway, have a great Sunday, folks, and uh, enjoy trading next week. Cheers.